Welcome to Everything Fear. Today, I'm going to be looking at my personal top 10 witchcraft movies of all time. Hello, welcome to Everything Fear, your one-stop shop for all things horror. I'm Kit Tinsley, I'm a horror author, film academic and general horror geek. If you enjoyed this video, if you could please subscribe, give us a like and maybe tickle that bell icon to be notified of future content, that would be great, thank you. As I say, today I'm going to be looking at my top 10 witchcraft horror movies of all time. Number 10, The Lords of Salem. Rob Zombie is one of those filmmakers who people either seem to love or hate. Personally, I have always been a fan of his movies, although my opinions on his movies are often controversial, even amongst fans. For example, I'm not a huge fan of Devil's Rejects. I think House of a Thousand Corpses is a much better film. My most controversial opinion is probably that my favourite film of his is this one, The Lords of Salem. It stands out in his catalogue as a more serious and skilled piece of work. One of the things that his critics like to throw at him is that his work is often style over substance. And while The Lords of Salem is probably his most stylized film to date, it's also what gives that film a lot of its substance. The Lords of Salem is a film about witchcraft, inevitable maybe, from a filmmaker from Salem, Massachusetts. Zombies other films seem to be about real world human evil. Lords of Salem is his foray into the world of supernatural horror, and it's much more restrained in terms of its depictions of graphic violence, and much more obvious with its symbolism. It's a much slower paced movie. It eschews the more confrontational feel of his earlier work in favor of something far more reflective. With its strong visual style and its great brooding dark tone, this is a wonderful witchcraft movie. Number nine, The Autopsy of Jane Doe. The first English language movie of Troll Hunter director Andre Overdahl is probably my favorite horror movie of 2016. A fairly simple plot. A father and son pathology team try to uncover the cause of death of an unidentified young woman. Strange things begin to happen the closer the two get to an answer. The film's links with witchcraft are hard to discuss without spoiling it if you haven't seen it. What makes this film so good is the tension that is so steadily and slowly built up throughout the movie and the amazing performances of Brian Cox and Emile Hirsch as the father and son. Number eight, The Blair Witch Project. The movie that popularised the found footage subgenre is clearly related to witchcraft in its title, though the witch herself is never seen and some would argue doesn't even exist at all. However, let's assume that the witch does exist. It would seem that her powers over time and space seem limitless. The movie based its unseen antagonist on true stories of what happened to women in the 17th century witch hunts. Still a brilliantly crafted exercise in fear, paranoia, and less is more. Though the Blair Witch herself is never seen in the movie, her presence is constantly and almost omnipotently felt throughout the movie. Number seven, Black Sunday. Inspired by the success of Hammer's gothic horror movies, Italian producers hired director Mario Bava to make this gothic horror tale. Based loosely on a short story by Nikolai Gorgol, this film centers on a woman burnt at the stake by her brother who returns 200 years later to get vengeance on her own descendants. The film wasn't overly successful on its original Italian release, although had far more success in both France and the USA than it did at home. The film pushed a lot of boundaries in terms of on-screen violence, being much more violent and bloody than its Hammer counterparts. Retrospectively, the film has been praised for its incredibly creepy atmosphere and eerie tone. Number six, The Craft. The Craft is a wonderfully entertaining teen witch movie, which delivers some brilliant moments. Though pitched as a teen movie, the film contains a lot of darker moments than other teen movies of the time. The film takes its subject matter seriously. The resurgence of New Age and Wicca 
in the 90s meant that the writers really had to research this topic well. At the heart of this movie's success, though, are the performances from the four witches. Robin Tunney, Neve Campbell and Rachel True all give great performances and are really, really solid throughout this entire film. The movie is really stolen by Feruza Bolk, though. Her portrayal of Nancy, a downtrodden outcast who suddenly gains this great power, is brilliant the way she's corrupted by her need for revenge. She is brilliant and terrifying in this movie. In every scene, there is madness and danger bubbling just below the surface of her performance. Number five, Haxon. This 1922 silent movie is so wonderfully weird. It's part academic lecture on the witch trials of the Middle Ages with historical reenactments. And then there's modern dramatized sections and almost an essay about what could be the causes of the witchcraft, witch trial epidemic from things like mental illness and um, you know, that sort of thing. Very, very weird, very wonderful film. The film was made by Benjamin Christensen based on his own research into the Malleus Maleficorum, the uh, guide that was written in Germany for the Inquisitors in the original European witch trial. It's genre-bending style with mixing documentary with special effects recreations was something really new and different at the time. And of course, for that reason, audiences didn't know what to make of it. And at the time, it got a very lukewarm reception. However, in the years that followed, the film has been reassessed as one of the shining examples of the silent horror era. It had a groundbreaking seriousness and really innovative special effects. Its blending of documentary fiction and recreation has been an influence on definitely the found footage genre, but also I think all the true crime documentaries that you see on Netflix now. Number four, The Witch. This 2015 movie from Robert Eggers is part of the modern revival of folk horror. It centers on a family banished from a Puritan settlement for being too Puritan. They are too extreme in the way that they follow the Bible. They live on a small farm in the middle of nowhere and soon come to believe that they have been cursed by a witch. The film deals with all sorts of issues, um, focusing on the nature of the American witch trials, but through the form of one family, as they all become increasingly paranoid and begin to suspect that each one is either in league with or is the witch themselves. And even though this film has really wonderfully authentic sets and costumes and dialogue, it also deals with a lot of modern issues, such as religious extremism and persecution, as well as the more metaphorical witch hunts that women still face in society today. The film's slow burn nature and its concentration on the psychology of the characters put some people off, I think, who were expecting a more out and out horror film. However, it's these things I think that make this film such a wonderful horror movie and genuinely scary. Number three, Hereditary. Another incredibly slow burn film that has divided horror audiences. Ari Aster's 2018 debut feature is a film about a family falling apart under the weight of a supernatural attack. At the centre of this movie are outstanding performances from Tony Collette and Gabriel Byrne. The film slowly unfolds its narrative and its scares. It deals with things like guilt, grief and neglect in a story that becomes more and more unsettling the longer it goes on. The film's links to witchcraft don't actually appear until quite late in the film, when all the things that have happened so far begin to make sense. Number two, Witchfinder General. I do not believe that there are any actual witches in this 1968 film starring Vincent Price. It does, however, deal with the very real horror of the British witch hunts of the 17th century and one of the darkest figures in British history, Matthew Hopkins, the self-proclaimed witchfinder general. Hopkins' reign of terror resulted in the deaths of 
300 people. Communities would pay Hopkins to come in and seek out the witches within them. People would also go and tell Hopkins that they thought such and such was a witch. This was a great way of getting rid of a nagging wife, an unpleasant mother-in-law or a nosy neighbour. The film was directed by Michael Reeve, who tragically died not long after the film was completed, but could well have gone on to be one of the greatest filmmakers in the world. The genius of Witchfinder General is that Reeve doesn't frame it as a horror movie. Using the fact that there's lots of horseback riding, that it's set in East Anglia, the most flat area of England, and that there's these big skies, Reeve frames the film as a British Western. Quick, great Michael Reeve story. Apparently, once on set, he got into a disagreement with Vincent Price, who turned around and said, Young man, I have made 150 movies. How many have you made? And Reeve just turned around and went, Two good ones. And apparently Price was so impressed with the confidence of this young man, he was only 23 at the time, that he just did whatever he said from then on, never disagreed with him again. Before we get to the number one spot, there are a few honorary mentions I would like to put in. The Witches of Eastwick. This is a great movie with amazing performances all around, especially from Jack Nicholson. However, despite a few horrific moments, I think this one works more as a comedy than a horror movie, so I couldn't include it on my list. The Witches. A Nicholas Rogue's 1990 adaptation of Roald Dahl's classic children's book is wonderful. It's a brilliant film with some actually quite creepy moments and effects by Jim Henson's workshop. However, as a children's movie, I couldn't include it on my list. American Horror Story Coven. Uh, the third and probably my favourite season of the long-running horror anthology show. Deals with a coven of witches in a finishing school in New Orleans. However, as a TV show, I couldn't include it in my list of witchcraft movies. And finally, <laughs> one that you can't really escape when talking about witches, The Wizard of Oz. This is a film that is basically responsible for the pop culture image of a witchcraft. The pointy hat, the pointy nose, the green skin, all came from this movie. Wonderful performance, but again, a children's movie and not a horror movie, so I couldn't include it. Number one, my favorite witchcraft movie of all time, Suspiria. Dario Argento's 1977 movie, Suspiria, is without a doubt the greatest witchcraft movie, in my opinion. It's the first part of his Three Mothers trilogy, based on the writings of uh, essayist Thomas de Quincey. An American dancer is enrolled in an elite dance school in Germany. She soon begins to suspect that something strange and dangerous is happening within the school and that her life may be in danger. The film plays out as a fever dream, from its incredibly bold use of colour to the fantastically eerie score by Italian prog rock band Goblin. These things all combine to create an inescapable sense of dread and a dislocation from reality. Possibly Argento's greatest film in a career that includes so many classics. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, that was my list of my top 10 favorite witchcraft movies of all time. Uh, if you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. If there's any that you really like that I didn't mention, let me know in the comments. And until next time, stay scared. <laughs>